Okay, so next lesson. Remember we saved things into our squeak 1179 3.1 image. So now we can restart that image by dragging it down to our cog application. And you notice we have this where we just left off from. Okay, for people who missed what we're supposed to be doing, you may not be able to see it very well there, but I've enlarged it quite a bit. This is the code you would paste. That first bit, you could pause and copy it if you want. I'll put it out on the website eventually. And then you could grab the second bit of code and paste and do it. And finally, you would paste this and do it after it's all said and done. So, we assume you've done that in the last lesson. Now we're going to go out to a website named opencobalt.org. And there it is. Open Cobalt is a virtual 3D virtual world based on Squeak and OpenGL. But we're not going to talk about that yet because it's way more complicated than we want to get into. But we can go to our code repository and go to projects and go to contributions. And we see this little bit of stuff right here that we can copy. And go back to Squeak. Open the World menu by left-clicking inside the desktop of Squeak. Open Monticello Browser. And now we're going to uh, click on the plus button, which will add a new repository. We go down to HTTP and paste in that bit of code. Now it's going to go out to croquet duke slash contributions. We accept. Notice it's selected and we can open and wait a little bit. And we see a list of libraries that are available at this website. What we're looking for is one called OpenGL Tutorial. And the latest lesson is the one at the top, which was edited by a friend of mine and we are going to load it. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we've loaded it. I was banned from a room. Why? I don't know, but I was. <laughs> so, we've loaded this lesson. Now, we're going to open our browser. Well, let's close a few things out. We're going to go to the browser. Scroll down, and we'll see we have open GL tutorial. And I know that my friend had just created a new class called OpenGL NEHE Morph. So we're going to. Play with that just a little bit. So we're going to say my OGL morph colon equals OGL morph new opening world. And if I didn't mistype it, you see we now get basically the NEHE tutorials. And we can play with them a little bit. If we go up to our library and look at things, we see we've got a current scene selector, which is being called by draw scene. 
Let's see, self perform current scene del selector. Perform is a little thing that will let you just call an arbitrary method. So we see that we have five lessons here. So let's go ahead and work with lesson one and save it. And now it's going to call the current scene director with lesson one. Type my initials. It doesn't do anything. Oh no. Well, that's because draw lesson one is blank. Well, let's go back to this and try scene selector two. Now we get basically something that is drawing a couple of little triangles and a square. So let's go back up here and try scene selector three. And now it's drawing the third lesson from the NEHE tutorials, which is basically drawing a triangle and a square with a little bit of color information added. So now we can go to any HE4, save again, and it's rotating them now. See, we have a little thing that does a rotate. Now our last one that is predefined is number five. So we're going to say work with number five, and sure enough, it now draws number five. Well, let's do something really silly, just to show that we have a lot of power here. We know that we're working with the um, current scene selector, which is sent by draw scene. Well, draw scene is just performing this current scene selector. I did something really silly, so we're going to bring up that code. And I'm going to paste it in. Go back. And I'm going to comment this out. And paste in our code. What does it do? Well, remember we're creating a ray here. And we know it's going to do something interesting. Let's actually show you that this is pretty interesting. Even though this is our source code for our actual method, if we just select one little bit of the source code and do a Command P for print, it actually prints out what that one little bit of the source code does. It ignores everything above and below. So what did we do? We created an array with that little symbol in front of it all the way through. So what does that mean? Well, that means that this perform thing, which is expecting a thing with a symbol all the way through, is going to work with each of these elements of the array, which already have the little thing, the little number symbol, which says they're a symbol, prepended. What does that mean? Well, let's try it. We don't want to delay. We're just going to save. That looks funny. What is it doing? Well, it's going through each of these lessons, one through five, and it's basically doing each of them with every frame. Our draw scene is called with every frame of the code, so it's basically going through all five lessons, every frame of the code. Pretty weird, huh? But you notice it never stopped drawing. That's the thing about Squeak. As long as you don't make a serious mistake, your objects stay live. And of course we can move this thing around. And they still stay alive. And we could actually say only draw this second one. We know the first one does nothing. Save it. No changes. We're going to remove those, save it, and it only does that second one. 
Now we're going to do 3, 4, and 5. Save it. And it does 3, 4, and 5. Now we're only going to do 3 and 4. Save it. Now we're only going to do 5. Save it. Completely live. All the tools that you've learned in previous lessons for Smalltalk are now available when you're working with this library that's extremely powerful, used for many 3D games, um, called OpenGL. Which means we're going to be able to do some really interesting things as we learn more about OpenGL.